My name is Arn Menconi. Hi. Good evening. Welcome to another evening of the Unscrewing of America USA Nightly with your host Arn Menconi for the next 17 days, U.S. Senate candidate for the Green Party in the great state of Colorado. <clears throat> okay, so... um. The show's getting really popular. It's blowing up. Um, now we have at least 100 uh, viewers, maybe 104 viewers. This is getting really exciting. So I, I thought I'd throw on a tuxedo jacket um, for the anniversary show. This is the sixth day of uh, my show on Real Progressive. So uh, we're popping... Uh, we're popping Gatorade, and uh, I'm sure somebody doesn't like Gatorade out there because it has something in there that I shouldn't be drinking. Um, but, you know, I woke up this morning, like many of you, after watching um, the, uh, the debates last night, thinking, man, oh man, I'm so fucked. We are so fucked. That's how I woke up this morning. It's not how I usually like to wake up. Um, um, it, it was because I, I, I realized how few times uh, global warming was mentioned in the debate last night. It was mentioned that many times. Um, I think Hillary mentioned it. The question wasn't asked. And then I did some research, and global warming did not come up in a presidential debate since... Take a guess. You want to guess when the last time? <clears throat> 2008. <laughs> Fuck. I mean, I've been laughing all day today because I have passed the point of thinking things are, uh, you know, like anything that we can do about it. And so I, I have some version of... Um, the cross between a hangover and a high colonic going on in my system right now. Um, I really don't even... So I, I, I spent most of my time here working, getting ready for the show. My producer wanted me to really knock it out of the park tonight. Um, we've got our sponsors that are relying on everything to go really, really well because um, there's a big announcement to make. Okay. I got a very serious, um, very proud, very excited um, endorsement today. Uh, the most important endorsement that I could have ever expected. My ex-wife is voting for me. I saw her fill out her. I saw her fill out her her ballot, and it was uh, it was heartbreaking. Um, she asked me, you know, how to. She's she's voting for, I won't get into who she's voting for, for president. And then we moved on to the next down down ballot, and um, I was on it. And you know, president, U.S. senator, and there's my name. And uh, then we went on to look at the other questions on the ballot, and she asked me about judges, and I said, I have no idea who to vote for for the judge, and she said, really, you don't? And I said, no, I, I could tell you about who foreign leaders are and where Aleppo is, but um, I don't think I can do much better on some of the local issues. And then we went into the amendments in Colorado, Amendment 69, which is, uh, if you're not from Colorado, we're not having to vote to legalize 69 in Colorado. Um, you're not allowed to do it. I think there's something on the books that still say that sodomy is illegal and um, probably w they weren't doing 69 back uh, when Colorado was founded in the 1800s because they were, they were all doing missionary uh, position. It was before, uh, it was before blues and, and before jazz and before massive amounts of drugs. But um, in any case, 69 is universal health care, and uh, it's something that uh, has to pass. 
And then the other one was Amendment 71, raise the bar. And raise the bar is happening here because corporations have decided that they don't want to pass GMO. They don't want to have uh, universal health care passed, minimum wage passed, anti-fracking passed. So they're doing something in states now where they're trying to make it more complicated to get citizens' initiatives on the ballot. So all these outside money is coming in. And then we, you know, then I played with the kids and I left. So I've got that endorsement. And, and the reason I bring that up is because right here on my Facebook page, um, it has received almost 200 likes and three shares and a lot of comments. So um, I know it's really important. I wanted to share that with you. But I, another big announcement to make is um, I, uh, I was looking at the polls. Donald Trump is, uh, is up 3% nationally in one poll. So if you go to Real Clear Politics and you look at the polls, it's kind of shocking because after I watched the news this week and after I listened to the pundits last night, I would have thought that Donald Trump was in the basement um, with people like you and me who just like to make memes and attack Hillary Clinton, basement dwellers, as she calls us. Um, but in any case, um, he is uh, doing quite well, which uh, blows my mind and levels that I didn't even know I had, um, because after the debate last night, um, many of you thought that Donald won. I thought when I watched uh, the Twitter feeds and uh, the the pundits that Donald lost miserably, um, but what do, what do I know? I only am about three to five percent in the poll because Jill's only about three to five percent in the poll because Gary Johnson is like ten percent in the poll. Can you just pause for a minute? In all the fucking insanity that's going on in our world. Gary fucking Johnson is at 10% in some places. He can't even find his vice president can, uh, running mate. You know, have you seen these two uh, in any kind of setting where the two of them are sitting together? Weld, who was a governor from Massachusetts, sits there. You know, it's one thing for Gary to be stoned, but Weld is on Quaaludes, and Quaaludes went out somewhere in the late 80s, okay? I don't know where he's getting this shit, but he's busting it up and snorting it, okay? So um, so we, we, we have uh, a show tonight that obviously is not going to be as serious as I try to make it because this is how I deal with a form of mourning. Um, if you can't fuck it, make a joke out of it. Uh, or if, or if uh, you know, fool me once, don't fool me again, uh, as George Bush tried to say. So, um, going right along, I, I had an announcement, and if, if you don't like what I'm talking about, because only 53 people are watching, um, I would like to tell you that I, I'm going to announce my run for 2020 against Kanye West for President of the United States. Because I have 53 followers on the show, um, which is more than what Jeb Bush got after spending $130 million, uh, I feel as though I am qualified to run for President against Kanye West because he is fronting, and I'm a baller. As uh, so, I'm working on a lot of terms that he likes to throw around. You know, like um, I'm a pimp and he's a player. You know that kind of stuff. Um, another way of saying it is, he spends all his fucking money on clothes and bullshit and wedding. And if I had his money, I'd be trying to figure out how to educate people about global warming, which doesn't seem to be wanting to be talked about that much. And seeing how global warming is going to cause the rise of sea levels by 2030 degree, uh, feet in the next 20, 30 years. And one of the places that's going to be impacted the most is Africa. I think I could run against him on a 
shaming campaign of how he spends all his money not trying to help places like Africa from rising sea level because his wife is buying fur coats and he doesn't care about animal rights as a matter of fact he's buying fur coats and he doesn't care about animal rights so he's he is a fronter he's fronting and I'm a baller because I'm wearing shit like this um, the other thing is um, so those, those are some of the opening stuff that I've been working really, really hard on. A couple of other things I've been working on. Let's go back to some foreign policy. Hillary Clinton likes to think that it's okay to say that she would invade Iraq. In camp, in, uh, Hillary Clinton's going to win this election, and I want to make sure that all of the people who know anyone who's voting for Hillary Clinton, make sure that you explain to them, except if they're your ex-wife, that you are voting for somebody, or they are voting for somebody, who is a war hawk, who wants endless war, who is lying when she says she would invade Iraq, because it's fucking stupid to hear a former Secretary of State say that she would invade Iraq to go into Mosul, when the Iraq government doesn't want us in there. See, the Iraq government is a mostly Shiite-run government. Mosul is in an area that's sort of Sunni, which is sort of the ISIS area. And then you have north of there, the Kurds. See, when... When there was um, this guy, uh, Saddam Hussein, there, he was a Baathist, uh, which was, uh, he didn't, it wasn't a religion, okay? He was just a thug, a dictator. And he was able to maintain um, Christians and Sunnis and Shiites and Kurds and all, and even Jews sort of all living in a country as long as you didn't fuck with him and you kind of were really obedient. This went on. Now what's happening is the Shiites tried to take over the Sunnis after the fall of Iraq because the American government let them. And the Sunnis had, and the Baathists had to leave the government, leave the military, and they started to become ISIS. And so us invading Iraq created ISIS, but I'm sure you know that because they never fucking talk about that in the news. So, in any case, to get back into it, we're, we have troops on the ground in Iraq. They're special ops. doesn't matter. We have about 3,500 in there, and we are training people. We're also working with Iran, who has Shiite military in Iraq, and I know this doesn't make any sense to you because we're always being taught that we're at war with Iran, but yet Shiite Iraq, Shiite Iran working together to fight ISIS. America has a dog in the fight called we'll sell weapons to any fucker who will buy them from us. And we're not going in to Iraq Hillary Clinton. So fucking stop using that shit. The other thing that she talked about is the no-fly zone. I talked about that quite a bit last night. But just to reiterate, you know, she kind of, again, was a former Secretary of State. She likes to talk about how when Donald Trump was on The Apprentice that she was Secretary of State and um, she knows better than everybody else. She doesn't know squat because she's thinking that she's going to um, friend um, um, Al uh, the, the leader of Syria and Putin who she always likes to thrash with because Donald Trump is a puppet for Putin. So is any of this kind of giving you an indication that your friends and family are voting for Hillary Clinton, a woman who's lying about foreign policy, doesn't know jack shit, and then when you go to talk to them about this stuff, they change the subject. And what do they change it to? Well, are you going to vote for Donald Trump? So it's this 
don't vote third party, don't vote third party, don't vote third party, don't vote third party conversation that people like you and me have to listen to. So I would just suggest that you don't talk to people whose minds you're not going to change. You could act as arrogantly and pejorative and condescending as they are and say something like, hmm, I guess I'll vote for somebody who doesn't want to kill innocent people, who doesn't want to, uh, who wants to s stop global warming, who uh, really believes that black lives matter, Jill Stein, um, as I say to people, because I'm like you. I actually have a real life where I talk to people who are friends in my community, who are sort of leaders in the community, and who are environmentalists and who run environmental organizations because I live in Colorado and when you don't really when you want to you know do something you work for an environmental organization and you know where I'm going with this is my new pet peeve environmental organizations yeah there I said it fucking environmental organizations with global warming going on and they're sitting around rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. They know that the carbon is at a point of no return. They know that the manufacturing and infrastructure is in place. But I talked to at least a half a dozen people today because I went to a little mayor kind of forum in my town where people talk about whether or not they should get grocery bags you know, um, boycotted and exempt from grocery stores so that if we don't use plastic bags at the grocery store, we'll probably avert global warming. And the people who talk to you about think locally, act globally, I mean, ladies and gentlemen, I hate to burst your, your plastic bag bubble here, but you're in a bubble, all right? Read the fucking science. It's going to happen. And it's going to happen faster than even the scientists are predicting because that always happens. They, they're they like, we're, we're doing bad. And then five years later, five months later, whatever it is, it's worse. So um, global warming is a very, very serious thing. And that's why I woke up this morning feeling like we were fucked. Uh, and our government isn't talking about it, our media is not talking about it, our friends and family are voting for Hillary Clinton, they're voting for the Democratic Party, the same party that we learned through WikiLeaks is in favor of fracking, in favor of the TPP, taking money from oil and gas, taking money. I, I, I feel like I've just been saying this uh, for the last six shows, and, and thank you all for joining the anniversary show of uh, Unscrewing of America. So I want to go to solution. So we could always talk about problems, we could always talk about how fucked up the world is, but we should also be talking about how do we make a difference. And I am a Buddhist, and I believe in practicing in the moment, as hard as it is. And I believe in practicing compassion. And I believe in practicing detachment. So if you practice Buddhism, it becomes a mind science where you stay detached from the outcome. If it's Hillary Clinton getting elected, or Arne Menconi, or Jill Stein, or Donald Trump. And you be in the moment of what's happening in that suffering global warming, in that suffering of one of your family members having cancer, in that suffering that you don't have health insurance and you, you're so afraid to get injured, in that suffering of whether or not you're going to be able to pay rent, in that suffering for someone who's dying in the Middle East and the refugees and what our country is doing. And in that you find a possibility. It might be a friend. It might be a resource. It might be a link. It could be a meme that makes you laugh. It could be the fact that you're operating off of 
more technology than anyone could possibly take advantage of. And you communicate out solutions. So you go to Twitter and you look at what I've posted on Twitter because I try to take that very, very seriously and you retweet what I'm posting on Twitter because it's about international, national news. It's, it's, a, it's a, Recently, it's the next 18 days, a lot of it's going to be about attacking mainstream media because they're very thin-skinned and they don't like it when somebody retweets them. You might take a Lee Camp video or you might take uh, Abby Martin video or a Ralph Nader podcast or something that Menar is doing on Mint Press News. Um, you might take something that's on uh, Tom's Dispatch. You might go to antiwar.com. You'd go to one of these sources that are alt news and you're going to find something in there that I don't know about and that somebody else doesn't know about and you're going to talk about it because right now the consciousness may be very evil but the opposite of that is very very good and so there's a lot of good that's going on right now like you guys giving me hope by wanting to even listen to anything I have to say by taking this effort right now to share something. So right before this call, I talked to a whistleblower's wife, Holly Sterling. You've heard me talk about Jeffrey Sterling, and you've heard me talk about calling the federal penitentiary and telling them that you want him to have help, that you want him to be hospitalized and get a stress test, and that number is 303 seven six three forty three hundred you've heard me talk about going to DC this Sunday with real progressives and doing our march for democracy and for some of us we may go further than a march because we will be interconnected for peace and then on Monday, we will have an anti-war rally. So the message that you're going to see me doing in the next 18 days is this urgency of now, this urgency of being in action, this urgency of being in hope, love, and faith. Taking that, taking your courage, taking your integrity, taking your compassion, and taking your humility. But the key is to do it together. So I know you're all suffering because I'm suffering right now. I know you all think we're fucked because I think we're fucked right now. But the opposite of that is also occurring. We are making a difference. In Colorado alone, we only need 600,000 votes to elect me as a U.S. Senator. Now, in th right now, in theory, the hypotheses, whatever, I'm only going to probably get 5%. And as much as I hate sounding like a fucking politician and a salesman, if we get up to 10%, that is a fucking historic race and then our movement our team our integrity our message will be attacking them in November to stop the TPP if we get to 20 percent we'll be able to talk about global warming and me as an activist either as a US senator or as a private citizen will continue fighting and laying down and getting arrested and standing in the way and speaking truth to power and showing you how to do it and showing how our children can do it because we're doing it in the moment 
detached from the outcome, good or bad. It's called karma. It's called building merit. You see, if you get and pull your head out of your ass like I try to do every 15 minutes because I'm such a shit show, you can make a difference because the only way we do it is by serving others. If we put all of our faith in the most hardest, all of our effort in those dying in the Middle East, the most tragic place, Aleppo, Mosul, Yemen. If we put our hearts and souls just in meditation for them, like I have for the past five years, they will feel your love and compassion, and we will start to change hearts, and we will have the conviction, and the answers will come to us, and the universe will shift. Don't believe me, because Albert Einstein said it. And Martin Luther King said it. And all of the great leaders have taught us that this is our calling now. This is a calling. It's a calling to serve the most poorest of the poor. And I need your help, and you need mine, and we need each other to stay strong. So come out to D.C. If you can't come out to D.C., do it in your own home, town. Find five to ten people. Go to a park. Go to a playground. Go to a politician's home. Go to a city hall. Go somewhere and lay down, because we're going to lay down for peace. We're going to do a die-in for peace. We're going to lay down and we're going to imagine ourselves other souls who are being killed by our government, our military, our Congress, our president, our past votes for Barack Obama. And something very beautiful is going to happen. So, thank you all for listening tonight. I'm, I'm just very, very blessed that we're together. Spread the love. Good night. Peace.